All I'm going to do first here is just use this online software Tinkercad. If you haven't got an account, you want to make an account to basically mock up the size of the camera. So the size of the camera is going to be 20 by, we're going to go 5 in, so that's enough. And then what we're going to do is get another cylinder here. Now, I'm going to make my lens cap about, mm, we'll make it one and a half mil all the way around, print that out and see what happens. And of course, it's going to be five. And then what we'll do is we'll line these up. First of all, I will make this a hole. Then what I will do is press shift and select the second part. You can see they're both selected now. And then up here I've got some align tools. So I will align one and align two. So now they're centered. Now the end of my cap here, I want it to be about a millimeter thick. So we'll try that. Now the 3D printer will sometimes not like to print small things because of thermal runaway. What I find is actually if you print two things uh, at the same time, that will help some people who use um, other software will set time delays between each layer or you can even use a fan but for this if you're just running a standard printer that you can't change those settings uh, we will print two at once so now we've got this whole part inside this uh, solid cylinder here well I'll actually do first of all I've noticed a new feature that I can change the number of sides I actually want to increase the number of sides can you see that it smooths it out? I actually want this to be quite smooth, so I'm going to go quite high until I almost see them go away. There we go. And the same for the one in the middle, if it will let me back to it. If it won't, what I can do is just drag that one down, grab that one. We'll increase the number of sizes to about 60 on that one, 62. I will then grab the second the solids and then drag it back up. Now what I can do is actually group these. So I will come up here, select group, and now you will see I actually have a hollow cylinder with an end on it. Now I'm hoping this will be big enough to fit on. Now one of the problems we'll find you will find you have is tolerances. So because this is exactly the same size as the camera, it won't actually fit on, it will be too tight. So what I'm actually going to do is ungroup those and what I want to do is make this about, if I change the dimensioning down here, the scaling, I'm going to make it about 0.2 bigger each way. And I'll just do that, no, there we go. So now it's 20.5, so we're essentially going to be 0.5 of a centimetre bigger. Hopefully that tolerance will let this clip on nicely, just fit on nicely. Now all I could do, I think another problem I did, I'm going to go back, is I didn't realign them. So if I select them both, go align. Now they're centred. Now I can group them. There we go. So I did mention we're going to make this a custom, a custom cap kind of defeats the point putting holes in there, but I'm actually going to put some text. And the text I'm going to put in there is DS for Dan Sohan. We will rotate that. Not really any point in rotating it. I'm going to make that fit. I'm going to make it a hole. And bring that into the middle of there. And then what we'll probably find is this might have an adverse effect on the camera. Actually having a, a shaded area that lets some light in. So it's probably not recommended really. I'm going to align this. And it cuts through. Now it is cut through one millimetre of material. The top piece of this is one millimetre thick. So maybe I could actually... Just sink that in a small amount. I'm going to first of all align them. You might have just noticed my mouse stopped responding then. They are aligned. 
and then if I bring that up and just partially sink it in, there might be enough of the cap to actually just have that recessed in there, so DS. You could theoretically put any kind of pattern in here you want with these little uh, shapes here. Just remember if you want to put some fancy shapes in, you can make the shapes however you want. You can um, layer them up like this and then essentially make them into a hole or a solid and by grouping or ungrouping you can theoretically come up with any kind of shape and sizes you want. Any patterns you want, so we could put that over there. We can then make sure they are aligned. They are. We can then group these two shapes, group. We can then make sure that those two shapes are aligned to this part. Now they are. And now I will actually drop them in by about half a mil. There we go. I could even control C, control V, as simple as control C, control V. I'm going to pop them on top of each other and then rotate that by 90 and then group again. There we go. So I actually have this little lens cap assembly now. I'm going to 3D print that. Um, just see how it comes out. Now, tip for 3D printing is you always want the flattest surface on the bed. So I'm going to try and flip that over and print it with this surface stuck on the bed, this up in the air. And I will also print a pair of them at the same time. You can probably hear my 3D printer warming up in the background. The uh, fans make a bit of a grinding noise when they're cold, but once they warm up they go quiet, or if you give them a tap anyway. So now I've loaded this into uh, the Maker bot software. You could use anything Slicer or whatever software your printer comes with. I'm going to press Control C, Control V. I'm just going to add two on the deck. I only really need one. But I can't be bothered to mess around with trying to make it delay between the two of them. Uh, I'm going to print them in ABS and I'm going to have it spaced out just so that it gives it a small amount of time between them to cool down. So we'll just check the settings. ABS I'm running at 237 on my extruder. I have my bed a bit hot because it seems to run a bit cooler than it actually is. So that's 125. Standard. Yeah, let's go for a high high quality. No, we'll go with standard because I lose my settings. Let's get this one out quick and easy. I'm going to export it and it's going to add it to my SD card. Bob's your uncle. As quick as that, it's on the card. So now we're ready to go over to the 3D printer and have a go at printing it. So there you have it, 3D printed lens cap. Should just pop on easily like that and uh, seem to do the job. Oh, get the focus on that. Yeah, not too bad. If I had to criticise it, I'd say the surface is a little bit thin there. Maybe the letters should not have been sunk so deep, but we can always go back and make another addition. Now, if your uh, lens cap's a bit too tight, what you might want to do is go back to your software for your printer, scale it up 1%, something like that, try it again. 
or you could go back to the original CAD software and make your modifications there. So as you can see the lens cap fits on quite nicely and I think it's time to put that to bed now. Good night.